Cuomo says he is not resigning after three women have come forward claiming sexual harassment claims against him. I now understand that I acted in a way that made people feel uncomfortable. It was unintentional, and I truly and deeply apologize for it. I wasn't elected by politicians. I was elected by the people of the state of New York. Uh, I'm not going to resign. Joining me now with more is New York Post columnist Miranda Devine. Miranda, long time no chat. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks, Paul. Lovely to talk to you again and be there in spirit, at least, in beautiful San Diego. Yes, uh, we're, uh, we had a rainy day yesterday, but we're expecting good weather today. Uh, probably better weather than the governor is expecting because, uh, you know, Miranda, it's hard. To, I, I, I'm 60 years of age, so I see a lot of these speeches that p politicians give, and it's almost like they have a template for how to apologize for allegations of this sort. And it felt like he was reading off that template. Will it work? Oh, I don't think so. And look, the fake tears yesterday were just extraordinary. They were so unconvincing. And if there's any remorse from Andrew Cuomo that's evident, it's about himself and about his own shattered ambitions, because there's no way that he'll be able to run for a governor again next year. And his presidential ambitions are shot. So uh, that's the only reason he's feeling any slight remorse, but he has no intention of resigning and there's no will to really get rid of him. Um, I'm sure he just thinks he can ride it out. Uh, after all, other people have ridden out worse allegations, really. I mean, you just look at the, the uh, allegations against Joe Biden that seemed to not touch him during the election campaign. So Andrew Cuomo will keep on keeping on. And the irony is that uh, he hasn't changed since the uh, November election. He's just the same person. He's been a bully and uh, an unwanted uh, sexual harasser for a long time. And people have known this, but no one's spoken out. And so last year in the height of the pandemic, when he was doing those daily press conferences and, you know, women were swooning, they were calling themselves Cuomo sexuals because they found him to be such a turn on for some reason. Um, they, they now, um, people are coming out of the woodwork and saying, oh, he's a terrible person. But where were they last year? Where were they when he was doing serious harm, when he uh, issued that callous memo that forced nursing home uh, patient, nursing homes to accept COVID positive patients, uh, which resulted in 15,000 nursing home deaths, many more than should have happened. Uh, his his record in the pandemic was absolutely abysmal, well, let me probably only there. rivaled by California's governor. Right. Well, let me interrupt you just so briefly, because in essence, he's fighting a two front war, is he not? Because is he not being investigated for some of those decisions as it relates to his pandemic response? He sure is, and that's the his own attorney general is doing that. Those investigations are still ongoing. It's the cover-up, really, that uh, will probably get him because uh, he tried to uh, hide that memo and lied and tried to blame Donald Trump. Um, he was just being used last year by the Democrats as a foil against Donald Trump as the sort of gold standard, as Joe Biden called him, of pandemic leadership when he was the opposite. And uh, so, yes, now we're hearing about sexual harassment claims that you know, are, are several years old, um, but, and, and the media is quite happy, like the New York Times is quite happy to focus on that because they completely missed and ignored the nursing home uh, tragedies from last year, which the New York Post was reporting on, but uh, Cuomo just kept sailing on and thought he could brazen through. It's only now that the Me Too movement has caught up with him that he's actually facing the music and perhaps feels that he has to utter a, a small amount of fake contrition but he's gotten away with blue murder all his career and no doubt he will continue on uh, as governor until the election comes and the public can do what they want to do right now and that is kick him out. Well, the handbook seemingly changes with the politician that is in the crosshairs. Please update me. Are we, t are we to believe these accusers? Are they credible accusers? 
I thought we were supposed to believe all accusers. Believe all women, yes. Look, they're very credible. Um, they, uh, there's photographic evidence for one of them. Uh, she talks about how Governor Cuomo came up to her at a wedding and uh, started coming on to her and then um, tried to kiss her and she tried to turn her head away. He grabbed her head with both hands and planted a kiss, at least it was on her cheek. Um, she was so shocked and uh, spoke out that one of her friends took the photograph. Um, you know, there, there's uh, evidence also from one of his staffers, a senior aide, who complained that he planted an unwanted kiss on her mouth, that he touched her inappropriately on her lower back and arms and legs, that he made all sorts of uh, sort of innuendo, uh, sexual innuendo, and asked her to play strip poker at one point. Um, all of this she catalogued in uh, real-time emails and text messages to her friends and her family. And her mother actually said, don't stay and be in, in a room alone with him, he's a pig. So, uh, you know, the, the women are very credible. Um, but again, I just ask, why is it now that he's being held to task uh, rather than, you know, after the election, um, rather than last year when he was still the same bad Cuomo, but at that time he was actually doing real damage to New York and New Yorkers. Uh, at least now it seems like his colleagues are going to strip him of his emergency powers, which will protect uh, New York businesses at least from his arbitrary uh, sort of rules that he loves to impose just to uh, exert his power. Well, before we let you go, uh, you have a column out today, I believe. I was trying to read it in between commercial breaks, talking about the <laughs> conditions of our of our National Guard in the Capitol and how they're being treated. Could you could you uh, give us the cliff notes, please? Look, it's appalling. They have been there now. It's their third month that they've been camped out in Washington, D.C. on this politicised duty. And now we find out that they have been fed the most rancid food, rotten food, undercooked chicken, uh, raw beef, uh, food with maggots in it, with metal shavings in it, rotten fruit. Uh, there are photographs of it that some of them are anonymously posting online on Instagram and social media. And um, it's appalling. They're having to dig into their own pockets to go and buy food because uh, so many of them have become so sick. They've been vomiting. Uh, about at least 50 of them this week uh, were very sick. They had gastrointestinal problems. And, uh, and a number of them, a dozen or so, had to seek hospital treatment. That's how bad the food is. And that comes on top of, remember in January, they were banished from the capital for some reason to a freezing cold garage. Now, what is the point of having these people there in the first place? They've had to leave jobs and families back home. They're a National Guard from California, from all over the country. And um, they are really doing it tough. It's not uh, an overseas hardship posting like Afghanistan. Oh. Surely they can get decent food. Yeah. I think every politician on the Capitol should have their credit card out buying pizzas every night. Yeah. yeah. Well, not pizza, because then they'll get fat and unhealthy. <laughs> well, hey, hey, now, now, <laughs> we're, now, now we're going to argue. <laughs> hey, uh, Miranda, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we wish you a dry day, okay? Thanks, Paul. Miranda Devine, uh, you can read her work.